So this is a five minute explanation of positivism and interpretivism, as well as the terms research paradigms, ontologies and epistemologies. So I'm sure that you've heard these confusing terms before more than once. And if you haven't, you probably will, because if you are based in academia, it is very likely that you will have to talk about paradigms, ontologies and epistemologies. And why is this important? Because all these things combined describe what you believe about the world and the best ways to explore it. And by talking about these beliefs, you can convincingly defend your research design. So the broadest term is a research paradigm, sometimes described as a philosophical stance or philosophical worldview. A paradigm is a very broad set of beliefs and each paradigm includes ontological and epistemological views, where ontology refers to the nature of the world as a whole and epistemology refers to views about best ways to research it. From a very philosophical point of view, ontology asks things like, what is reality? Is it, for example, something that is ever-changing? Is it something stable, with us just being neutral observers? Or is it something that we actively create by being here? And how you answer these questions directly leads to your epistemological beliefs, which again are beliefs about ways to gain knowledge or in other words, beliefs about ways to explore the surrounding reality. For example, if you strongly believe that the world and the reality are fixed, stable entity, you may feel that to explore it, we need objective and scientific methods that will enable us to observe it in a systematic way. And on the contrary, if you believe that reality is something that we actively construct through our perceptions and beliefs, you are most likely to decide to go and talk to people in order to explore that reality. So you are likely to adopt qualitative methods in your research. So these are our ontology and epistemology. And as I said at the beginning, each uh, wider uh, worldview or paradigm consists of its own ontological and epistemological beliefs. And although a variety of different paradigms have been put forward depending on the author or the book you're reading, uh, probably the most uh, commonly, the most consistently mentioned are two contrasting paradigms, namely positivism and interpretivism. Before we continue, I hope that you're enjoying this content. If you do, please let me know in the comments and like this video to help others find it on YouTube. And also remember to explore my website where I list different services, including Zoom tutorials, during which I can describe this topic in more detail, as well as help you plan and conduct your research study or analyze your data. Positivism is a paradigm associated with a more scientific approach and often with quantitative methods. It sees the reality as something rather stable and governed by certain universal laws. Such ontology or belief about the reality is called realism and it's very often associated with positivism. Furthermore, since this stable reality is independent of our views, the way to study it uh, is through scientific methods. We need to be objective when doing so, which also means that views and beliefs of individual people can only get in our way, so we don't need them. These epistemological beliefs are called objectivism. And now on to interpretivism, which on the other hand stresses the importance of individual views, subjectivity and interpretation. There is no single unified, stable and objective reality that is waiting to be discovered, but rather we can see the reality as a combination of multiple realities that depend on individual people. In simple terms, our views, attitudes and beliefs are important in the construction of reality. And this uh, belief is often referred to as a relativist ontology. This stress on the importance of individual views and perceptions means that qualitative methods are often prioritized because we do want to explore individual views. And as we enter the research context, we are influencing this research context and it influences us. We do not aim to remain neutral and objective. There is no way around this mutual relationship, so we should embrace it and talk about it. And this belief uh, very often is referred to as a subjectivist epistemology. So this is it. Let me know in the comments if you enjoyed it. And I hope that I made it a little bit easier for you to understand these complex terms.